through the mystic art shows Sadhguru in his various facets in conversation with eminent personalities from various walks of life, exploring a vast array of topics including business, politics, design, architecture, sports and ecology. I'm delighted uh, to be in a conversation with uh, Sadhguru. What we'll do today is uh, explore moral dilemmas, uh, various sorts, particularly with reference to uh, the corporate world. Extremely important that successful people send a clear message, success is a beautiful thing. It is not a suffering, it is not a miserable thing to do in your life. If this has to happen, your expansion has to happen by embrace, not by conquest. A lot of people have not strived for their success. They are successful by chance. That's why they're euphoric and depressed. If they had crafted their success, you would know the mechanics of success. It doesn't matter what's happening today, you know where you're going anyway. Nobody can take that away from you. The way we have structured our economic process in the planet is such that if we fail, we will be depressed. If we succeed, we will be damned. The beauty, the pleasure and the joy of action a human being will know only when he has no need for activity. When somebody says he's a leader, I believe he's a solution for millions of people who are not able to find a solution by themselves for whatever reasons. You build ten ceilings, you will not be a leader in this country. You just block one or you break one instant. You are in the spiritual realm and I'm anything but spiritual, I'm in the completely temporal realm. I built all my life around the principles of rationality and logic. Now you talk about corruption or some other misconduct in public life or in private life. We talk of morality and values instead of talking no, about institutions. Uh, as far as I'm concerned, there's no corruption in India. Where is corruption in India? There is only banditry. It's such an ambiguous law, this is good to control foreign nations if you occupy them, not for our nation to move ahead. Too much ambiguity. There is something called as humanity within us. If you stir up this dimension which we call as humanity, when somebody is feeling very human, he doesn't need morality, he will be fine the way he is. This one quality set us apart from the rest of the world, so outside world recognized as one nation, though there were so many political entities. We need to understand even today, it is only this spiritual thread which is keeping this as one nation. If you break this one thing, after twenty-five, thirty years, you will wonder, why are we one nation and we will break. But this question persists, am I living a dream or is this reality? Education is basically about enlarging the horizons of human perception. But unfortunately today, slowly education has shifted into a mode where people believe is about enforcing information. This is not about giving them ready-made answers as information, this is to have an active intelligence which constantly searches and seeks and looks at everything in every possible way. Above all, to know the joy of wondering about life, not having ready-made <laughs> answers for everything. Ready-made answers are religion. I can walk fast, maybe you could fly, but you will miss out the possibility of flying because you're in competition with me. All you want to do is take few steps more than me. The gardener in this school, is as important for us as the headmistress of the school. So that's what the children are constantly perceiving. Once you make one thing bigger than the other, one thing small, one thing big, one thing high, one thing low, one thing divine, another thing filthy, then you miss the whole point of existence. So the essence of education is to enhance your perception in such a way that you are able to perceive a blade of grass being as important as the coconut tree is not less important. It's different, that's all.